Hey, everybody. One more day before the Sabbath. And uh, <clears throat> this is a topic that I've shared many, many times, and, but I've never made a video of it. And so I just wanted to bring that, bring it up. And, and tonight's thing is uh, the voice claimed to be Jesus. This is about the voice or the light that claimed to be Jesus on the road to Damascus for Paul. But uh, I want to share something with you because I know there are a few of you who sincerely want truth, sincerely want to follow the Father. Um, you're not just here to pick a video apart and, and uh, make fun of different things. You're really trying to seek. And, I, and one of the things that, that continuously you will find is people accusing you of cherry picking. And uh, they pick, that's picking certain Bible verses out to support what you believe. And the thing that bothers me is they do the same thing. They pick out verses too. I stack verses. I've been accused of stacking verses, meaning I put the verse down rather than writing the whole entire context and having 16 pages. I have the key verse for you to look up and you can study it out for yourself. And so I try to take the verses as I find the subject matter and try to make it into a flow so that you can see the key verses that point to things. A lot of times context, most of the time context is important. But when Jesus said, um, <laughs> I forgot the one, when Jesus said, uh, oh, do not believe, in or out of context, when Jesus says do not believe this, he means do not believe this. And so there's a number of times that uh, context uh, is, it usually helps back up the, the, what the verse is saying, but the verse is saying what it's saying. Also, I want to share with you guys um, something that's real important that I still struggle with is character attacks. Um, I've left churches because the pastors were so good at preaching. They were verbal manipulators. They could raise their voices. They could make you think that what, if you believe that, that you're wrong, that you have put God in a box. They had their little digs that they like to say throughout. And they also make fun of people in the Bible because it makes them look more serious or more like they've got their act together. And so any, any, anytime somebody, uh, somebody did it just the other day, they said, oh, well, Marty, you show your ignorance. Isn't that like a, a slap in the face? Isn't that like a verbal attack starting? See? And so you and I need to watch it, how we do it to others, and make sure we don't do it to others. But... It's incredible. Some of the best pastors I've known are verbal abusers in a Christian religious sense. And so uh, uh, don't let people do that. My dad, I remember way back in junior high and stuff, he said, why do you let the bullies pick on you? I don't know, because I'm skinny. No, because I was conditioned when a bully takes and verbally abuses me, I cower under him. That's what my dad did, Archie Bunker, Sanford and Son. He verbally abused my brother and I and my mom. I swore I'd get, when I got bigger, I was gonna beat the crap out of him. But uh, when I got bigger, I got saved. And God made, showed me that the guy is really screwed up and he's following the ways of the world and stuff. And so don't, it's, drop people, drop them. There's several places in there, it talks about shake the dust off your feet if they don't receive you. If they wanna verbally attack you, then I, I'm not going to mess with them. I'm not going to bother them. I'm not going to follow people who I watch behind people's backs make fun of them. It's just not worth it. That's where God's trying to get me to raise the standard and stuff. So uh, be encouraged, guys, girls, ladies, men, women, all that stuff. Um, when you're dealing with some of these, these facts and stuff in the Bible and principles, um, you're going to get beat up. That's just all that is to it. And I've got secure enough in my walk with, with the Lord that, uh, and I, 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 I'm still in learning things. You have to unlearn stuff. You have to reprocess stuff to where I can walk righteously and blamelessly for God. I can do right and make right choices because Jesus has set me free and stuff. And so, uh, okay, I want to talk about Paul, but I also... Ananias, I'm going to talk about that at the end because everybody throws that in. Well, Ananias said that God told him, but we're going to look at that afterwards. Okay, um, 
one of the things, this, Jesus warned us about this several times. And uh, Paul, what you need to do, there's three places where Paul was talking to different people about his conversion story. And you need to print those out, all three versions, and compare the difference, what's, make, what's in them, what's not in them, what's missing, uh, what's been added to make it sound better than what it is when he's talking to the, the head guys at the, the trial where no one else stood with him. See, a lot of times a very proud person, when everyone abandons them, it always makes them sound like it's their fault. It's everybody's fault. Paul makes the other disciples sound stupid. In order to lift and we believed it. I believed it for a long time. This guy's the greatest one around there. And James is trying to correct us. And first John is some of that. He says, No, this guy's prideful and boastful. He's arrogant. Don't follow that. That's not a, of Yeshua or Jesus. Matthew 24, 24 through 26. Chapter 24, 24 through 26. This is the key. What I want to do is establish what Jesus said. So we can get that in our paradigm, so when we hear something else, we can help balance it out. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, that's the incorrect, it is possible, even the elect, those people elect to follow, follow God. Verse 25, see, I have told you before, and if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not go. If he says, look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. Jesus is making it clear that he does not work this way. If somebody says that I am the Christ, or someone claims to be Christ, including a bright light, an angel from heaven, do not believe it if it's out in the wilderness. He warned them. The disciples were fully trained for three years under Yeshua's leadership. Why would Jesus spend three years warning and building these guys up? Matthew 24, 30. Then the signs of, of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Where? In heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds on heaven of heaven with power and great glory. He is starting to build in their pictures, in their minds, hope and what to look for. Paul was not around for any of this stuff, guys. Paul was not around for this. He was not an apostle of Jesus Christ. He did not walk with them and listen to him. Mark 14, 62. Jesus says, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. When will they see him next? Jesus is not now all God. He sends his angels to do his work. He, now we're, we're, you're going to look these up so you can see the context. But you're going to watch the flow here. We're going to go to Acts now. Acts 1.9. The last personal visit with his disciples. This was the last recorded personal visit that Luke had for his disciples. When he said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward the heaven, the disciples are all standing there with their mouths open, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them, witnesses, witnesses. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand, oh this is 9 through 11, sorry, yeah, why do you stand looking toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Jesus has warned him. And angels from heaven stood there and warned them, made things clear. Are we getting it in our heads now, guys? Are we believing what Jesus says? Matthew 24, 5. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. See, what we don't, we, we presume that this is all speaking futuristic, but this was happening in the real time right then and there. It was in the real time. Think about it. The, rebel, the letters to the 12, church, or, yeah, the 12 churches in Revelation, they were all functioning. You think John sent those letters, copies of them, to the 12 churches? 
One of them was Ephesus that Paul helped start. Read that one, what they say about it. That was in real time when John wrote those letters and sent them off to the church. We take and think about it in a futuristic way, but John, the Holy Spirit, anyway, we'll go down to that. Okay, Acts 2.33, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God. Revelation 22.16, this is what I'm thinking about. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you. John, the beloved of Jesus. He's talking to G John while he's in prison at Patmos about these things, etc. It goes on. Jesus did not even appear to his own disciple, John, who kept laying on him all the time and being around him. Acts 10, 7. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his helpers and they went off looking for Peter. This is about the vision. Cornelius was a righteous man seeking God and God heard his prayers. So he sent him to Peter. How did he Peter know? This guy was a centurion. He was a Gentile. Acts 10.10b. 10.10b. Peter fell into a trance and had a vision. Peter's his main man. He had a vision. Jesus didn't come down and talk to him. He's, he's glorified with the Father now. He is fully God. He's, he's got his seated in his place. And Peter, that testifies. And if you, I had another teaching on that. Peter is the one that was called to the Gentiles. That is who the Lord Jesus called. Acts 22.8 A bright light came in the desert of the, on the road. Paul said, Who are you, Lord? I always wonder why did he call him Lord? And he said, I am Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, if you believe the Bible has key factors in it and key tips and information on truth, then you need to think about this. Jesus never ever addressed himself as that. He always said the Son of Man. The Son of Man. And read all these accounts. Paul didn't always say this. Paul added Hebrew words. He added this, added that. Okay, 2 Corinthians 11, 14. And no wonder even Satan, this is Paul speaking, disguising himself as an angel of light. Paul was misled by the light. Paul's first recorded miracle was to blind a man, just like the angel of light did to him. And scales fell off his eyes. Why did it say scales? All the versions say scales fell off his eyes. Think about it. When did Jesus... Or any of his disciples blind people. When, even Peter, when he dealt with the one, one guy, uh, he, he warned him, told him to repent and pray. He told him the gospel. Paul didn't. Paul cursed him and made the guy blind. Who was Ananias? Ananias, this always comes up, but you presuppose stuff in your mind. You have preconceived thoughts. And so who was Ananias? What do we know about him? Paul explains it in Acts 22, 12, because he's at the, at the, the judge place. Uh, he's, he's on trial right now. And he explained, this is his own words, and a certain Ananias, who was a devout man, according to the law. Which law? God's law or the Pharisees' laws that they, they added? And well spoken of by all the Jews living there came to me. What I'm wondering is this Ananias is only known by Paul's words to Luke. Because in Luke 9, 10 through 19, the vision that Ananias have was spoken in the second person. Whoever told it to Paul, or to Timothy, or to Luke, <laughs> whoever told it to Luke, which is probably Paul, was telling the story. So if he did not have it, who gave it to him? Who gave the story to Luke? What happened to this Ananias? Note the context it's written in, in second person. Read these verses. Was Paul telling Luke the story? Now in Acts 23, Ananias the high priest ordered Paul slapped. Is this the same guy or just the same name? There's three different places listed in Acts where it says Ananias. We know Ananias the fire were both killed. So it could have been those guys. And so, who was Ananias? We all believe, because he states it, whoever's telling this story, 
states it in the first person that Ananias said this and he quotes it first person. But there's no other witnesses. None of the guys at the road from uh, Damascus with Paul ever stated, you, we don't read statements from any of them. All we do is read what Paul says about it. Paul lets you believe what he wants you to believe. So what reason I'm sharing this is this is a key pivotal point, folks. This is a pivotal point. If this event did not happen, if that was not God, if it was the de devil, the angel of light, if Ananias was some Jewish disciple guy that the angel visited to follow through with his little scheme and to empower Paul and to give him such a, a belief that, that he's going to win and he's right. Paul wanted to be right. Paul was proud. He made fun of everybody. People say... I'm a heretic. I, I'm terrible because I, I question Paul. I have read so much about him. I have seen the character. I've seen the stuff he's saying. I've seen the Old Testament. I've been comparing it for so long now that there's no way I'll ever believe it, that Paul was a righteous, proper man and stuff. So, Father God, I ask that you strengthen anybody and everybody who's out there who's struggling to find the truths of your words in your Bible. Lord, I have no doubt that Paul's a test. I have no doubt that, um, see how I can manipulate that? See, even in a prayer, you can manipulate it to make it sound like it is such a truthful thing that people can believe it. Father, help us to allow and trust your spirit to te teach people, not us, not our words, not our fanciness. Father God, forgive me, please, if I misled people. I, I've been erasing more and more teachings, Lord that I found that were incorrect, that I swore and thought was totally backed up and proper, but my presuppositions were wrong. Father, strengthen anyone and everyone to walk with you and to be able to stay to the end, to endure to the end, to walk with you to the end, so that we might glorify you. In your son's precious, wonderful name, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, amen.